Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and today I've picked some beautiful, beautiful pieces to show you from my weekend's buy-in. I went down to Bessemer Road, Cardiff, Boots Hill yesterday, uh, Sunday morning. I'm there from half past six in the morning, freezing cold, pitch black, and I'll show you what I bought. Got some really beautiful things, guys. Make sure you stay tuned. Okay, just quickly before we get going guys, if you love antiques, collectibles, you're in the reseller business, then don't forget to subscribe because my channel's all about how-to videos. I go out buying antiques and I show you what everything's worth and how to identify it. So state your claim guys, make sure you subscribe. If the videos help you and you like them, I would really appreciate a like and a share to help me keep creating videos. Let's get to it. Okay, now I know I normally save my star lot to the end, but I've got a couple of star lots today, so I'm gonna start with one and finish with one. This is by far my favorite buy of probably the last six months. Now, what I got here is a porcelain figurine of a tiger fighting a crocodile. As you can see, the tiger has sunk his teeth into the shoulder of the croc, the crocs come around and bite in the tiger on the head. Seriously exceptional quality. I don't know if any of you have guessed who is by yet. It's a very rare figurine. There isn't another available worldwide. So anyway, there you go. And there, just there, is the printed mark. It has the printed mark for Royal Ducks, made in Czechoslovakia, with a pattern number 634 over 8. Now, the first thing you'll notice when looking underneath is there's no pink triangle. That's the first thing I normally associate when, with Royal Ducks. I pick it up if I see the triangle, it's Royal Ducks. Um, but they used a variety of marks, and I'm going to show you some of the marks in there now. But this piece is absolutely spectacular. I haven't decided quite yet what I'm going to do with it. But, uh, yeah. Stay tuned. Let's have a little look at a little bit of research. Okay, so I've simply searched for Royal Ducks history, basically, on Google. I just want to give you a little history on the Royal Ducks. Now, I'm going to come to this site here. This is the site I've stumbled upon here, realorepro.com, okay? And they have a nice little article here on Royal Ducks, 150 years of porcelain. It began in 1860 and can be divided up into four main uh, periods of production. So you got, if you look here, you got from 1860 to World War I, uh, 1919 to World War II, 1947 to 1990, and then from 1990 to the present day. And it gives you all the history throughout there. You come down here, it talks all about the famous pink triangle, and I'll show you pictures of that in just a minute, and all the history and everything here, the impressed triangles, it talks about the made in Czechoslovakia mark. It does give you some examples of the marks now, guys. If we scroll down through all that, it talks about the fakes and forgeries. And then it starts showing you some. Now, there's the famous pink triangle that you see on 90% of Royal Ducks. Now, some of the early Royal Ducks from the 19th century sells for thousands. Really does. Um, and some of the Art Deco pieces pull hundreds too. Now, the piece I've got here, I'm not 100% on the date yet. I'll show you why in just a minute. But it's giving you an example of the marks as we come down here. Now, that's very similar to the mark I have, sorry, just there, which is a 1919 mark, but it is also uh, 1919, a 1990s mark, but it is also the mark from 1919 to 1939. Uh, let me go back up a minute. Let me see if I can find that for you. Just a second, guys. 
Okay, guys, sorry about that. Um, as we see here, we have the Royal Ducks made in Czechoslovakia used from 1919. It was also used, obviously, up until 1939, but then was used from 1990s also. Yeah, since the early 1990s. Uh, exactly the same wording as 1919 to 1939. Miscellaneous numbers that might be confused with dates may also appear with marks such as 1853 and so forth. Now, I have got impressed marks. So I'm actually thinking, looking at it, mine is from this period, but it could be from the 1990s. So I've got to do a bit more research on there. But this, um, again... Very similar, Royal Ducks, made in Czechoslovakia, they say in 1930s, but there. Now I know I don't have the triangle, but they don't all have the triangle. So anyway, this is a good little uh, page for you to look at. Again, figure 32, but there's what I've got. And it gives you quite a good little bit of history on there. Nice art deco pair of figures there. So anybody who want to read the history on that, it's not a bad little um, page for that, guys. Okay, so now back to my usual. I've come to eBay now, and all I have done is search Royal Ducks Porcelain. I'm going to show you pieces that are actually up for sale now, and then I'm going to show you some sold prices. I've searched worldwide. Just to give you an idea of some of the uh, higher prices people are asking for this uh, stuff. Now, it doesn't all pull this type of money, believe me. You can get Royal Ducks for 10 and 20 quid. But the rarer Ducks does pull good money. It used to be collected a lot by the travellers. It's a nice Art Deco figurine there. What more can I say, guys? Uh, you can see the prices they're asking for some of this stuff. And uh, to be honest with you, it's very simple, some of this. What I was hoping to find was an actual similar thing to what I've got. We look here now at sold prices. £500 for an Art Deco piece. That was best offer. Best offer again. Best offer again. £311 for an Art Deco lady. 255 with the cows. The camel again. And some of these prices, you know, they're not bad for a couple of hundred pounds for a pair of figures. When you compare the fact a Worcester or Roald Dalton figurine, you know, is 30 quid. So the prices are right up there on this stuff. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the top now. And all I'm going to search is a Royal Ducks Tiger. Obviously, what I got is a tiger fighting a crocodile. Now, as you can see, just a small tiger on his own, £75. £58, £40, £30, £30, £22. And you're coming into the stuff now that is quite, to be honest with you, is the mass-produced rubbish but if we come back up here it's not a bad looking uh, tiger I suppose 75 pounds just for a tiger I've looked worldwide Google eBay sold asking you name it I have tried to search for this figurine there isn't another one out there so what do I think I'm hoping it's the 1919 to 1939 edition. Um, I'm going to have to do quite a bit more research, but I'm basing it on everything. The quality of the manufacture, the way, the colour of the porcelain body, everything. Um, it's got the 1919 to 39 mark, and it's got the impressed numbers. Now, I don't think this is going to be a brand new production from the 1990s. It's got too much weight, too good a quality, but it could be. Now... 
if it's from 1990s, it's still going to be up around them prices of the Tiger, around £100. If it's from the 1920s or 30s, then it could be potentially three, four, five hundred pound. The only way to know is to do more research, guys. And the best part about it is not a chip, not a flea bite, and it cost me a pound. I know you, 99% of you won't believe me, but I was in Bessemer Road yesterday at half past six in the morning in the dark. I saw that on the floor. I took one look at it, asked him how much he wanted, and he said a pound. I couldn't pay him quick enough and put it back in my car. All day I spent looking at it and loving it. Um, so I haven't decided yet whether that's going to end up on a shelf or up for sale. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, one of my favourite buys of the year. So really pleased. Anyway, let's stay tuned. We're going to move on to some more. Okay, next I bought, I was stalled next to a dealer. A house clearance man and he had on the floor he had a collection of toy cars all american vehicles from sort of 30s to 50s this one's 1940 and it is bear with me i don't even know i'm not brilliant on my cars it doesn't say the model on it uh they're produced by a company called gearbox there you go ford dulux now this one, shockingly, isn't just a die-cast model, but it is, in fact, a pedal car. Shockingly, with, with steering wheel that works and everything. Now, it's a really good weight, beautiful quality, has a wonderful look. And I had a full range. And I'm going to splice in a couple of photographs now. If you have a look, I don't know which side I splice them in. I bought a whole heap of these cars, all different ones. Uh, Chevys, I got Ferraris, I got all of them. Some beautiful, beautiful cars. Now, he was a fiver a piece across the board. And I have got a collector coming in buying all my die cast toys. Now, I've already had a look on eBay and I'm more than shocked at the prices of these. Stay tuned. You won't believe some of them. Okay, guys. So, all I've searched is Gearbox Diecast. Okay? That is all I've searched. And it's come up with uh, 232 results. Now, if we start scrolling down here, you can see... A 1958 die-cast Chevy by this gearbox, £97.37. There's another Chevy, £97 again. There's another Chevrolet, £97. Again, £97. £92 for the Corvette. £58 for a Chevy again. Now, they're not all stupid monies, but the bigger ones are good money. Again, £40. These are sold prices, mind. There's another one. They've done a best offer, £85. Don't know what they took. But the ones I've got are the larger scales. These are, There's mixed. You've got small scale and larger scale here. But as you can see, they are all good money and they're all sold now best part about it is there's next to none available in the UK very few so I can practically name my price on these and my price is going to be around 25 pounds each um, and I'm gonna be really pleased give you a little look I've already got them out all the way along there and across there and that's where this one goes now back in there and they will all be on display looking beautiful in my cabinets and I do absolutely love them really nice quality to be honest with you they knock spots off the uh, Kogi ones and that I've been selling lately the weights there the qualities there so I'll splice in them photos of the others as I've said guys okay so as you'll admit um, Real nice set of cars. We're going to move on now to another set I bought. 
Now, all I saw was this old tea box, tea caddy, whatever you want to call it. Um, when you open it up, I saw a beautiful collection of antique dominoes. Now, most of the early dominoes you'll find will be ebony and ivory or ebony and bone. Now, these are both wood. It's painted white wood on top and ebony underneath. But they do have age. I'd put them post-war. And then pre-war, really, you would, you'd be finding bone and ivory. Um, but I don't think it's a full set. Now, I googled it, and a full set would contain 28 pieces or 55 pieces or more, depending on the rest. This has got 54 pieces. So I think there's one piece missing. But it's a real nice set. Comes in a really good old box, and it cost me two quid. Um... I'm going to put 20, 25 quid on them as they are. And if there's one piece missing, it doesn't really matter. They can still play the game with the one missing. And they're a nice set. And I'm sure you could replace the one piece if you wanted to. Uh, but a really, really nice vintage set of dominoes. And for the money, for two quid, I weren't leaving them there. And that was off the same seller that I had the cars from. So I was really pleased with that. Okay, so all I've done here is search vintage domino set. And if we, uh, bear with me, scroll down through, done obviously highest priced and sold. There's a nice Bakelite set there, sold for 110 the best offer. £74 for a vintage wooden cased set. Uh, but a Scotch Domino's cribbage set. I'm looking for just a standard set, a bit like what I got, to be honest with you. I don't know if there's any on there. There's Bone and Ebony, I, as I was saying. So they're going to be pre-war, they are. And they've got eight replacements made of wood. 37 traditional uh, wooden domino sets, 37. 1850 Bone... Standard dominoes now. There's a set there of 28 dominoes, wooden celluloid. Do you know, these may be celluloid. I'll have to have a proper look under eyeglass. And they're 30 quid. But they, that's a set of 28. You could make the 28 out of the ones I got if you wanted. But obviously I've got a double set. Okay, um... As you know, I always look for jewellery, but jewellery was really thin on the ground yesterday. I had two pieces, that is all I had. First was this sterling silver set with what looks to be shell uh, bangle. Um, come in an original H. Samuel jewellery box. So there was a no-brainer, fully hallmarked, and it was two quid. So that's fine, that's going to go out for... 15, 18 pound, maybe 20 quid at a push. And I had this Pia, which is a designer name over here. And we have a sterling silver necklace with the tree of life. So nice little uh, necklace there. And this one cost me two pound 50, dearer than the um, bracelet. But that's fine. So you got the tree of life and the bracelet. Tree of Life's going to go for about 12 to 15 pounds in the box ready for Christmas now. Bracelet, maybe 20. Let's say 30 quid to pay, and they cost me 450. So for that, I don't mind. But I always buy jewellery. Um, I got two lots to show you now. I got one standard, and I got then my final star lot. So stay with me, guys. We're going to go now to this piece, which is really thick half inch thick glass cut crystal and this one is by edinburgh international beautiful piece i always do well with crystal as you know and anything signed i buy now it's a fully signed example on the base i don't know if you can see it there international edinburgh um and it cost me a fiver with um a stewart crystal champagne flute that i have bought for a customer but I'm only showing you the vase today. So perfect, no chips. Always important to check for chips and cracks. Give, you know, give it a good little tap. Listen to that beautiful sound. 
paid a fiver, don't know if I said. Um, I've actually put 25 on there ready uh but we will have a little look i'll give you a little look at some of the dearest pieces on ebay now for the edinburgh international vases uh one of the most popular sellers is drinking glasses they sell like like it's not tomorrow but i do well on vases because people like them for birthdays and christmas to put flowers in so i always buy crystal i always will but let's have a look Okay, so all I've done here now is search Edinburgh Crystal Vase in sold prices. Uh, so you've got a nice thistle vase there for 69 Again, thistles. There you come into a bit of cut crystal, Balmoral pattern, £45. Uh, Master Miniatures, clear glass, 31 Thirty pound there for a barrel moral cut. Twenty nine ninety nine. So you can see the sorts of monies. They're not stupid money. But twenty five pounds about the right money for that vase. For a fiver. You know, I wasn't gonna leave it there. Okay, my final lot and another star lot. Absolutely love them heavy tool now what I have got here is a pair of fire dogs I know they don't look like dogs but what a fire dog is was two stands that you would put your fire irons your shovel your brush your poke or whatever for sorting your fire and you dress them on top of these next to your fireplace now Everybody has made fire dogs from Dr. Christopher Dresser all the way down to Joe Bloggs. Um, but this set is spectacular. Both examples have, if you look there, I don't know if you can see it, is the Victorian lozenge mark. Now the Victorian lozenge mark went from 1842 through to 1883. Now, I can date these to the exact day they were made, and they were made on the 12th of May, 1881, parcel number five. That's how accurate I can be with dating these. They are in beautiful condition. The pair of them, there's no damage to them, there's no dent into them. They both have the Victorian lozenge mark on them. Um, I'll show you how that works in just a second. And I bought these off a dealer, another dealer. 15 pounds they're not far off that in scrap value uh, if more but they have such beautiful quality high-end victoriana at his best these were in a grand grand house let me tell you this wasn't the run of the mill stuff it's all sort of bobbin turned brass it is spectacular love the shape on them um, believe me, first thing I done was check that they weren't by Dr. Dresser or something like that because the quality is there. Um, we got the Victorian lozenge mark, as I said, dating them, but we don't have a maker's mark, sadly, that, and I have looked. But I know they would have been by somebody really good. But we can have a look at the lozenge mark just to give you an idea how that works. Then I'm going to show you some prices of fire dogs. Uh, but I can tell you now, my £15 is going to be well over 100 Okay, guys, first things first, I have just gone to where we, there's the uh, website and the domain. And I'm simply looking at the Victorian lozenge mark for you to help you date. Now, there's two types. It's the 1842 to 67 and 68 to 83. Now, the one I have is the later one here, obviously, because mine's 1881. So, basically, you'd have the class, the date, the parcel number, the year letter, and the month letter. So, for mine... We scroll down here for the year letter, and mine was E. So if we scroll down there, we see E, 1881. And my parcel letter, again, there, May. And the number for the date was 12. So 12th of May, 1881. So it is as simple as that. The information's all there for you. All you have to do is be able to read. And it is as simple as just looking at what's where and it tells you where it all is. Uh, then I came across and I thought I'm going to have a little look at 
fire dogs for you. Now these are fire dogs that are currently up for sale on eBay, not sold. Zoom out the fraction. Right. I want you to see some of the prices people are asking on fire dogs. Uh, four hundred and fifty pound for paying nineteenth century French dogs. Cast iron four fifty. Brass ones there three nine five. Three sixty nine for brass ones. Three fifty. Art Nouveau Fire Dogs eighteen ninety. Well, need I go on? You can see some serious money in these pieces. It really is. People are asking a lot of money. And anything with, that you can date to the day is easier to sell than something you, you just put an estimated on. So these fire dogs with a lozenge mark will be 10 times more desirable than when they've just put an average date on them. They're 1900 circa, so they can't date them. They're asking £200, and they're very simple fire dogs. Look at those. Fire dogs, there's the companion set. I was telling you about the shovel, the poker, and so on, and that would sit across them. £187. So anyway, we're going to come across, and we're going to have a look at the sold listings on eBay, which isn't a lot. There's a pair there, 150 That's a great... £105, and look how plain and boring they are. Again, £100. Full set there, 99, 89 with the full set, 89, 89, but I don't know how old they are, they say in Victorian, but I'd be questionable with that many sets of the same, 69, there's a paper there by Dr. Christopher Dresser, and God did they undersell them. £75 buy it now. I bet they ripped their arm off for them. They should have been more 300 I miss them. See, there are some really good deals to be had on eBay, guys, if you know what you're looking for. Anyway, we're going to leave it there on those. The ones I have here are spectacular. Real nice, top quality pieces, guys. Good size, good weight. And with a lozenge mark on. Let me see if I can get a close-up of that for you. Just to give you a little look. The lozenge mark, there you go. That's what it looks like. As easy as that. So. Beautiful, beautiful. There's my two star lots. And was it worth going to the booty just for those? Oh, hell yes. As you can see... Really good buying day again. Now, I did sell down in Bessemer yesterday as well. I sold a lot of household stuff. Um, I didn't take anything decent. I took my one cabinet with some bits of ivory and things in there to sell them before the ban on ivory comes in next year. Um, but other than that, I took all household stuff that I didn't want. Stuff from house clearance, things like that, that I just needed to empty my garage a bit. And to be honest, I could probably do 100 boot sales, selling stuff at a pound and two pound, to empty my garage and that is that much uh, household general stock in there um, but when I'm going down to the car boot sale making a decent day's uh, wage and then coming back with stuff like I have and you haven't seen it all these are just some of the select pieces I pulled out those cars are going to make me a couple of hundred pound the Royal Ducks should make me a couple of hundred pound these fire dogs are going to make me a couple of hundred pound you know, it was another forty, fifty pound on the uh, the other couple of pieces. All in all, spectacular day. If you could do that every day of the week, then you're laughing. Now, don't get me wrong. This job is not as easy as it looks. You put hours and hours and hours of grafting, guys. You really do, and you got to learn the trade, same as any other trade out there. But it is a very rewarding job when uh, you have a good day. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look at these pieces, guys. Uh, videos are going to be slow over the next month or two due to personal um, situations. Uh, my girlfriend's due to have a, a baby now, so it's a lot of time back for hospitals 
and obviously once the baby's born it's going to be slow so videos you're going to have to bear with me i'll put them out when i can but they're not going to be as regular as they have been for a little while but i'm not going to quit i will keep making films you're just going to have to bear with me they'll be a bit slower for a while guys thanks for watching bye for now